Hello everyone, I'm out of focus. Why? Look at this. I have to trick this camera into focusing on my face. I think my my face is like distinctly not person shaped or something because this camera does not believe that I am a face worth focusing on, which if I'm honest is really, it's kind of messing with my self-esteem. Um, well, hello everyone. Welcome to learn with Jason. Uh, today's going to be a solo episode. We had a uh, change of schedule. I know some of y'all showed up looking at Rust for JavaScript developers. That episode is still going to happen, but we pushed it back a little bit because uh, Sid is still working on the course. It's not quite ready to go out, and we didn't want to do the episode before the, the course is actually ready. So uh, if you want more information on that, you can go find Sid on Twitter and, uh, and keep an eye for when that goes. We'll reschedule as soon as he's got a launch date for it. Um, what I am going to do in, in the meantime is uh, I have been meaning to just start playing with some some new ideas for the Learn With Jason store. So the Learn With Jason store has been up for a while. Uh, if you have not seen it, I have um, some things for sale. So you can find my uh, these these rainbow corgi rubber ducks that I absolutely love. You can find a bunch of stickers. Um, and so I built this, this piece of the site pretty quickly, right? I was just trying to get something out there because I wanted it to work. It's, um, but it's, it's powered by Shopify and I don't know. I just want to see if I can make it a little bit better. So today, what I want to do is dig into, um, just building a new experience for it. I thought I could build it with Next.js, try out some of the, the Next.js features. Um, we're going to look at potentially playing with, um, maybe, maybe we'll play with some edge functions. We'll see. Uh, and just, uh, just seeing what we can put together in, you know, 90 minutes of playing with next and, and Shopify. Um, so let's see. Um, yeah, so hydrogen is very cool. I, I do really like hydrogen. Um, and you're not wrong. However, I want to do a whole episode on hydrogen and I would love to get one of the hydrogen devs to teach it. Uh, me fumbling through it, I don't think is going to be giving it the right. I, I'm, I don't stream for long enough to like learn something from scratch. I don't think I would, without a guide, get far enough for it to be a, a particularly engaging episode. Um, so I will do, if I can find it, any any Shopify devs out there, if you want to you wanna teach hydrogen, uh, hit me up. But uh, we today we're going to use Next.js because I'm familiar with the technology, and also it's just it's very popular. Like everybody is building with Next.js today, and I thought that this might be a good way for folks to get a sense of how to build with it. How do you use Next.js to build a an e-commerce store if you don't want to use a template or if you've never done one before, um, but you want to use Shopify? So let's let's uh, go ahead and and dive on in. So what I'm going to do is instead of doing the normal thing where I just talk for forever. I'm just going to start building some stuff because I have this sneaking suspicion that I'm going to spend way too long on CSS and, and I want to make sure we actually build something today. So uh, first and foremost, this episode, like every episode, is being live captioned. We've got Rachel here today from White Coat Captioning. Thank you very much, Rachel. That's made possible through the support of our sponsors, Netlify, NX, and New Relic, all kicking in to make this show more accessible to more people, which I very much appreciate. Um, we are going to be working with... Um, the, the store data here. So this data is already in Shopify. Um, so the benefit here is I already have a working Shopify store. So I'm not really gonna go through how to set up Shopify. I'm more gonna be looking at, if you've already got Shopify data, how do we get it out and into a store? Um, I have other episodes. If you are curious, you can uh, you can search for some Shopify stuff. I got a whole bunch of episodes in here where we've got Kelly Vaughn, who is is a just a great teacher on Shopify in general. Um, we built some stuff with uh, Fauna and discount codes in Shopify that was pretty cool. Some more advanced like workflow stuff. Um, we use Builder.io to put together a, a Shopify site. Um, another one with with Kelly. Uh, I set up Gatsby and Shopify. So we got a lot of Shopify content in here if you want to go and look at it. Uh, but today we're just going to, we're just going to play a little bit, see how far we can get. So, um, what's up everybody. I see some, see some familiar faces. Ryan Warner. What's up, buddy? Uh, yeah. Adrian. Hello everyone. SMMPS. Uh, yeah. So the, the, like I said, the rest for JavaScript developers is going to be, um, is going to be later. It is going to happen. It's just not today. Uh, and Umar Codes, welcome, welcome. Thank you all, the first time chatters. Glad to see you here. Let's uh, let's let's 
let's do some stuff. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just make a new project for this. So I'm going to make our, uh, let's call this LWA store Next.js Shopify. Um, I might rename that later, but for now that is going to be good enough. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to try something and see if it works. I'm going to try NPM create Netlify. Let's see if this works. I think this works. This is a new feature that I haven't actually tried, so it might not do what I want and I might have to do something different, but I think it's going to let me pick uh, which flavor of thing I want to deploy. And I think it'll let me deploy a, a brand new next site. So let's see, here's Netlify. I want to create and configure a new site. And we're going to call this LWJ store Next.js Shopify. And base directory, yeah, this one. Oh, this isn't going to do what I want. You know what? I'm not going to do that uh, because I thought it was going to let me create a, a Next.js site here. So let's uh, let's do one of these and I'm going to do npm create next. What is the, what's the quick start command for Next.js? Let's go to docs, getting started, npx create next app. Cool. Let's do that gonna do a, a one of these big hairy dude what a, what a username <laughs> um let's see i'm actually gonna put this project oh wait i need to do it right here don't i here what what oh because we started that project and then killed it so let me get rid of that one do another one here we go oh lee what's up lee um, so we're going to do the install here, get this all running. And now we have a basic next app. Um, so it looks like we got some pages, got an API route, got some, some public stuff, uh, some global styles. So we'll go in and clean all those things up. But what we want to do to start is just take a look here. Um, you know, we've got all the basic scripts, only a few dependencies in here. Um, so I'm just going to start this up with Netlify dev and all right. So there's our site and that is all doing what I want. Good, good, good. So I'm going to go in and just start cleaning things out. So let's go to our index page and I'm going to leave that head. Let's just put one of these in here and then the rest of this I'm going to leave out. Oops, need the closing main tag. All right, so we got a main tag. Won't use that image. Um, probably going to dump a lot of the styles. We don't need that. Uh, we probably don't need that. We don't need... Let's see. Let's let's see what this looks like. Okay, so that's like a like a plain old plain old thing. Um, so we're using the system font. I'm cool with that for now. Uh, this is looks like just a reset. Great. Um, we've got our home module. I'm just gonna blow that whole thing away. And all right, so we've got home.module.css. Uh, that means that these no longer work. So we'll just have a plain old. Yep, that's good. Um, where do these colors come from? Color scheme dark. What is the color scheme though? Is that just like a, is that just like a thing? I don't know what that is. That's a cool, hmm. That's all right. So that's something to dig into. Uh, not rabbit holing on CSS today. I'm probably going to intentionally make this a little bit ugly to prevent myself from over-focusing on CSS. Um, oh, thanks for the sub, big hairy dude. Appreciate it. I uh, see Anthony showed up. What man, Val? Um, should I learn Next.js after studying React for like two months? I mean, sure. Like the the thing that's cool about uh, most of these frameworks is is that like Next.js is cool. A lot of companies are using it. It is it is going to be uh, a useful tool to have in your belt. Um, 
Other frameworks like Remix are going to teach you more about the web platform. Uh, they all use React under the hood, though. So if you if you're learning React and you start using these other frameworks, you'll start to see where the edges of of React are and the the nuances of the different frameworks. Um, and I can I'll try to call out some of those today as we go. But uh, yeah, lots of lots of things. Look, Benjamin, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going turbo on CSS today. Um, what I am going to do though is I think. Just to keep my life simple, I'm not going to do any like color variations. So we're going to have just a, a kind of a straightforward thing here. And then I'm going to put together a container. That container is going to have a margin of, we'll do it like five rem and auto and a max width of, uh, we'll go with say 600 pixels. Um, and I think that should be good. Right. Okay. So that's our container. And if we, if we take a peek at this, now we've kind of got this like centered area where we'll, we'll put all the code in. So I've got that. And then, uh, this API route, we're not going to need yet. Um, app, let's see, styles.global. Good that we need that, uh, index.js has not a whole lot in it. So let's go with, um, learn with Jason store we'll say please buy a duck um and then we can say has so many ducks please help um for the favicon we don't really need that so i'm gonna leave it out for now i think it'll still give me a still give me an error but i don't really care at the moment um and so then that's going to be, we've got our container, we've got our main that doesn't really need anything yet. We've got our H1. And then the next thing I want to do down here is I want to get uh, a div that'll be a class name of, we'll do it styles products. And that's, that'll be where we put the actual products themselves. Um, and then I want to actually load the products. Whoops, products. So let's take a peek into the the shopify api um let's see what's up xander what's up tony um yeah i mean they, like, like tony said there are good framework options out there they're all valid and it it really depends on what you're trying to build right like Next.js is a great framework if you are building something very complicated. Like if it has, if it's a dashboard, if it's got lots of moving parts, if you need to load data from a bunch of places, if you've got, um, you know, a, a lot of variability in what you're building. Um, if you're building a, a plain old page, so I mean, I could make an argument that I'm, it's overkill for me to build a store right now with uh, with Next.js for like what I'm going to end up doing, but. I also just kind of want to learn. There's some stuff in, in next 12.2 that I haven't used. Like the, I'm curious how these nested routes work. So I want to play with those a little bit um, and just kind of see, because I think it's cool and I want to try it out. So, um, so like I'm doing this to learn if I was building this for production, like if I was building it for Netlify, I probably wouldn't build a swag store with next. I would probably build it with something a little bit lighter weight on the JavaScript. Um, but you know, like there, th these are where the trade-offs come in. What are you trying to accomplish? Like, and also what does your team know? Like if you're working on a, a team of 10 people and nine of them know how to use Next.js, like you're going to be faster with Next.js and you got to weigh that against the the cost of learning something else. Um, but if you've got a bunch of, of front end devs who are like really good at HTML and CSS, 11 is probably going to get you a higher performance, faster build time, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but if you don't know HTML and CSS, it can be trickier because now you're you're trying to learn the platform instead of using something that you already know. Um, so it's it's deadlines, it's it's trade offs, it's uh, you know what's what's your user base, um, how long does it have to live? Like, is it something that needs constant steady maintenance? You're gonna you're gonna roll over the way that looks every couple of weeks. Um, you know that constant iteration. Like sometimes you need more component based stuff to make that easier. Uh, you can build design systems. Sometimes you want one built in like the, all these things come with, with costs and, and benefits. And you just gotta make sure you actually run through those and, and make sure they work. Oh my goodness. Jonathan Snook just showed up with the worst pun, the worst. Thank you for hanging out. <laughs> it's good to see you. I haven't seen you in a minute. How you been, man? Um, I know how to eat cheese. I know how to eat cheese. 
That's can we do? Dang, can we do that? Uh, Ryan, I am not going to be building a checkout. I'm going to use Shopify checkout because I like that. Um, like shop pay and stuff is just built in. And so you get things like order tracking and, and you know, those pieces without me having to do anything. And I just kind of am okay with the fact that the checkout looks like a Shopify checkout, because honestly, I, I find that to build confidence. Like when I go to a store and I hit their checkout page and it's a Shopify checkout page, I know that they're using shop or they're using Shopify. I know that the payment system is like vetted. I know that it's not going to some randos like inbox and they're going to manually enter that credit card information. Um, so I kind of prefer the, the Stripe checkout, the Shopify checkout. Um, and from a developer standpoint, like I want the easy thing and it's definitely the easy thing. So, um, let's see. So let's see <laughs> it's deadlines. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, definitely got to get back to Portland. It's uh it's it's very hot here now, but dang, it's going to be cool. Um Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the shop app is is kind of like built into the the checkout. We can look at that in a minute here. So the first thing I should probably do is let's go to my Shopify store. Um where is it? shopify.com. I need to log in. I don't remember where, so I'm going to do it over here. Um that sounds right. I thought I was logged in. Are you looping me right now? Okay, no, here we go. All right, so here's the Learn with Jason store. And in it, I have a bunch of products. Um, so we can see the, the products that are in here. We've got like the sticker packs, we've got the, the Corgi duck. Um, and then down here I have, is it here? Where is all this stuff? Got the wrong address in there, boy. Um, where is my apps? That's what I'm looking for. Nope. Oh no, they changed my. They changed my dashboard, and now I don't know where things are. Um, store details plan. Online store, store importer. Apps and sales channels. Develop for your store. Private apps have moved. That's what I need. Develop apps. Learn with Jason. And this, I think, is my... I'm going to pull this off screen just in case it shows a key. All right. So I have... Uh, choose permissions. Shared secret. I'm, I'm looking at this off screen because I can't remember if this API key needs to be private. I'm pretty sure the API key can be public, but the password is private. But just in case, I'm not going to show you either because I'm sneaky. Um, so what I'm going to do is, uh, is off screen here. I'm going to get a new window, pull this out. I guess I got to do it over here. Um, and just take my API key in secret, get those into a doc for myself so that I can use them. And that is how I'm going to actually hit the, um, the end point here. But then what I need is I need to go and find the, um, let's go to the Shopify, let's see, Shopify developer API. And I'm going to put this back up here so that everybody can see what I'm doing. So here's the, the API reference docs. And so what I want is I want to get a list of my products and I think I can do that through storefront API. That's the one that I want. And I've got the GraphQL storefront API, which is dope. Um, let's see curl Node.js. I think I want the Node.js one and let's go to the, are you the docs NPM package? Hmm. Hmm, that's interesting. I've never seen that. So what's this going to give me? Let's uh, let's take a look. So we're going to go to getting started. And I need to install Shopify API. All right, so let's let's start installing things here. Um, we'll shop, stop here. And I'm going to npm install. Shopify, Shopify API. I'm not going to need .env, I don't think, because uh, Netlify will already give me that. 
and then I'll add TypeScript as well, which I think is a dev dependency. I'll add it anyways, it doesn't really matter. And not using Express, examples, it was dev, that's okay. Oh, I'm gonna need the node types as well. Um, so then once I get down in here, I don't really want to change a bunch of things. Is it gonna, maybe I'll just ignore that and see what happens. Um, it's doing a lot here. It's doing a lot here, y'all. Um, what's up, Ricardo? See some first time chat. Lots of first time chats this time. What's up, y'all? Um, yeah, TypeScript should be a dev dev. Yep, that's that's what I thought. I should have listened to my gut, and I didn't. That's what I get, I guess. I'll fix it. Um, so let's go back over here. You're going very slow. All right, so here's TypeScript. I'm going to drop it down here. And then the other thing that I'm going to need is I also need the types node. And that should fix. Did that break my stuff? NPM I moved everything. Okay, good. So these are, oh, damn it, I put it in the wrong place again. Again. Uh, let me take this and move it down here. Right. Do another one of those. Make sure it's in the right place. Good. Okay. So now we have the, the Shopify API, we've got our node types, we've got TypeScript. Um, I don't actually you know what, I'm starting to think that I'm severely overcomplicating this. I should probably just hit the endpoint, right? Um, let me, do you just have like, what if I just want to call the thing? So you make a call, you get your active Shopify shops. And then I want to make a request. Hmm. I don't know how I feel about this. This might be, this might be more than I need. Like I kind of just want to store for an API call. That's what I want. So I got a shop, got an access token. And then I don't like this. Um, okay. No, no offense to the devs who built this. I shouldn't, I shouldn't dunk on other people's code, but this is, this feels like a lot. I don't want to use it. So I'm going to instead go back to the learn with Jason site where I've made a call and I'm just going to copy the way that I did it there. Um, which I think I did through just a straight up call. So I've got a post to Shopify, which I'm gonna need. Um, so let's maybe just actually dive into that function. Um, I've got my utils folder up here. Here is my post to Shopify. And this is going to make a, a GraphQL call. So why don't we grab this, take it out here. I'm gonna set up, um, I guess I can do this as how does next handle utilities? Great question. Let's try. I'm going to just set up, not in the, not there. I'll set it up at the top. Let's set up a new file called utils. Dang it. That's supposed to be a folder. Let's delete. And I'm going to set up a new one called utils. And then we'll just do Shopify dot js drop this in here and let's let's just do a quick oh i made this typescript if i just make this typescript does it work like is this going to explode um good question don't know i guess we'll find out so i have the ability to post to shopify you send in a graphql query and any variables that you need um i'm gonna i didn't config this is not a, a typescript project so i'm just gonna drop the typescript out uh, let's get this and then we'll get rid of this and then we'll get rid of this. Any other TypeScript in here? No. Okay. So, um, we send in our query and variables. We then await a fetch. So I'm going to have to install node fetch. 
which I can do here. And then um, we need to set up the Shopify API endpoint. And so the way that that works is I can go Netlify env set, and then I want Shopify API endpoint. And I need to figure out what that is because it's in the, I guess I can just go look in my site. Um, so if I go to app.netlify.com, oh, I can show you all something cool while we're in here. So check this out. We've got in the site settings, you can go to the build and deploy. And then um, have I not enabled this? Now check this out. This is cool. So I'm going to go to labs and then we've got um, deploy contacts for environment variables. So check this out. Now, when I go into my sites, I go back in here, I'll go to my, my site settings and then I'll have environment variables. And so now I want to migrate my environment variables over here. And what that'll give me is, uh, all of my environment variables are now set up like in here which is super cool. And then I can set them to only work in certain contexts. So like if I edit this, I can say specific scopes and like now the environment variable only shows up in functions and not in builds. So this is super cool. If you like need an API key to make an API route work, but you definitely don't want it to be available to like the client side code, you can just uncheck this, right? Like how cool is that? It's, um, so I'm not going to do that. And I need the same thing and there's nothing sensitive about this one. So I can just, ta-da. Okay. So I'm going to take that and come out here and I'm going to set it. And this is going to fail because I didn't actually set up the site yet. No site ID found. So I'm going to Netlify link. And this is going to be to the, uh, got to get out to the site that I just set up over here. This one. And we'll go to site settings and it's going to give me a site ID so I can copy that and I'm going to enter a site ID, bada bing, bada boom. Um, and so then we'll run that Netlify and set again. And what this will give me, if I go and look at my environment variables now is I've got my Shopify API endpoint, right? Um, and so this is, uh, this is pretty nice. It's, it's set. It'll run now. I'm going to do the same thing. Um, let's see if I hide this. Ah, oh, perfect. Okay. So then what I can do is I can Shopify API key and let's see Shopify storefront API token is what it needs to be called. And that token is the one that I put over here. So I'll drop this in. And if I wanted to, I could set it up to where like we had a, a beta store or like, a, oh, you son of a damn it. Well, I'll go roll that token. Okay. Um, well, actually the API key is the API key public. Does anybody know the API key is not sensitive because you need the password to do any changes, right? Um, what was I just looking for? I was looking for. Don't know what I was looking for. Just scan in the chat real quick. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Lots of lots of first timers here. Thanks y'all for hanging out. <laughs> Benjamin, get to the CSS. I'm gonna. Um, let's see. Is there at least to learn how to build Shopify sites? Um, you can get to a. There's like a dev store that you can't go public with. Um, so if you look at Shopify like dev store, um, you can create a development store. This, this would be how you do one that you want to learn with, but you can't actually sell anything through it. Um, what else? <laughs> Nettles boops. What's up, Brittany? Uh, Chris with the sub. Thank you so much. Um, Shipify hacked. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, I'm not. So the rust thing got rescheduled. It's not gone. It's just going to happen a little bit later. Uh, we needed some more time for Sid to get his course launched. So, uh, stay tuned. We'll update the schedule once that's live, but today we're doing some Shopify. Um, all right. So we've got this API token. I'm almost positive authentication. 
the API token header on all queries, right? Header on request from a backend. Okay. And so I'm not using that, the delegate, I'm not using like the secret. So I'm going to just go ahead and trudge forward with this. I don't think we need to worry about that because this will let you read from the store, but that's okay because all the data in the store is, is read. Like that's, I want that to be public. Um, and yeah, Brittany, the, the Netlify init thing would have done it, but I started it before, which created the site. And then I didn't finish linking it because I wanted to create the, the next site first. Um, so I haven't, I didn't like finish setting it up. So I'm going to have to do some manual things to make it all work. Um, so I've got my token. Am I any other things here? Okay, great. So this is my, going to be my Shopify query. And then in the API routes, I want to create a, uh, we'll call it products.js. And I'm going to go back to my learn with Jason code here where I've already done this. So let's go to products. Um, and if anybody wants to, let's see alphabetical order. If anybody wants to follow along, like you can see the code to all of the learn with Jason site here. Um, this site is built in remix and it was super fun to build. There's a lot of cool stuff in there. Um, today we're playing with next because next is also fun and I want to learn things. So let's build out, uh, this one is running TypeScript. Uh, it's a builder function. Why don't we start by just getting the details? So I'm going to export const or no, this is the next API route. So I got to go look at their, uh, next JS. Let's go look at their API routes. And I want to see an example. So I just want a basic one export default function handler. Cool. Let's do one of these. All right. Um, and so what I'm going to do is up here, I want to import from utils. Util and Shopify. And what I want to export is you going to autocomplete for me. Yeah, you are. That's great. Love that feature. Okay, so then what I want to do is I want to get, um, does this blow up? We're going to find out. So const data equals await um, post to Shopify. And then we have our query, which I'm going to have to write, and our variables, which I don't know if I need, but I'm going to get ready for that. And then we'll, um, let's just return whatever we get back. Right. Um, so our query then is going to match. Let's just use the same one I'm using on the site already. And this will be my, um, my product list here. So this is all the data that I use to get products on the learn with Jason site right now. Uh, let's do just a quick run through of what all of that is, because if you never looked at GraphQL before, this can be a lot. So the query name is get product list. And then the products themselves are, um, are going to be sorted by price. That's what the sort key is. And we're going to get the first 100 products and we order by reverse, presumably because that is, uh, what I, I don't know why I chose to do that. Probably to put the duck at the top would be my guess. Um, edges is a graph theory kind of term. So if you think about graph theory, you've got like nodes, those are dots, and then you've got edges, which is the lines that connect the dots. And so edges can contain relationship data. Uh, typically speaking, when you make GraphQL queries, at least in, in most like basic use cases, edges is just the thing that wraps the node. So an edge is a relationship between nodes. The node itself is the, is like one of the products. And then inside of that, I want the ID. I want its handle, uh, description title, how many are left. And then variance is a Shopify thing where you get, um, like sizes or colors or, or things like that. So within the variance, I also want the edges and nodes. And then I want to get the title, uh, how many of them there are, and then the price. Um, we also want to get the max variant price, the min variant price, in case you do need a, a price range, because you can do something where like a, an extra, extra small is $10, but a, a quadruple XL is a bigger item. It costs more to make. So maybe that one's $15 and, and you want to be able to show like the range is 10 to $15. Um, and then we want to grab any product images. So in my case, I'm just grabbing the first product image 
Um, but hey, any of y'all who have ducks, maybe send me maybe send me product like images with the ducks. I know that a lot of you have have tweeted them, and uh, maybe it would be fun to to put some like people doing fun stuff with their their rubber corgi ducks. This is the duck, by the way. I love this duck. Um, I get a lot of joy from. What on earth? Yo, what the hell was that? Did I like, come on y'all. What? I like double click something and it broke everything. Okay, is it still doing that? Okay. Nope. Still broken. Okay. Okay, I think I fixed it. I had to like quit my whole browser. Um, that was the weirdest thing I think I've ever done on this stream because it was like my whole my whole tech setup just like absolutely rebelled just now. Um, so weird. Uh, thanks for sticking through me through that with me, y'all. That was one of the that was a that was a fun little mystery. Um, okay. Anyways. So now, assuming I have done all of this correctly, which is a, a 10,000 foot if, um, let's start this thing up again. And because I have set those environment variables in Netlify, it will pull them down for me. That's part of the local dev experience, uh, which brings me joy. And then if I come over here and bring this back up, and I go to... API products, products. I'm going to get an error because I screwed something up, I think. Let's see. Unexpected end of JSON input. All right, that's fair. But what was it? Um, 
So we had all the pieces. The pieces should have been correct, but we're missing a thing. So the thing that we're missing is, um, oh, I have a theory. I think I got the wrong Shopify account or the, the storefront API token. So give me a second off screen while I update that token. Go to apps and go into my uh, develop apps for your store. We're gonna get into this thing. Gonna gonna scroll on down past the admin API into the storefront API, which is the one that I actually needed. So let me copy that, and we'll go back into app.netlify.com. I am going to my site. Uh, nope. I meant to go to the environment variables here and then I need to update this one. So we'll go options, edit, and there's the new one, save that variable. All right. So then we're going to stop and restart. And theoretically speaking, this will start working. Ta-da! Okay, so now we've got products, right? So um, let's see, we are just just about hitting halfway through the episode, and so we've got some products. Uh, those are being loaded on the page through an API route. Um, I would like to use these now. So let's go to my index.js, and I'm going to... Uh, let's just list them, which means I need to export... Is it a const? Let's let's go to Next.js, um, get static props. And I'm gonna just jump right in here. So export async function, get static props. Async function, get static props. And that is going to uh, return props. And inside of this, I want it to have my products. So I'm going to... Um, Let's just hit that API route, right? So I'm going to do a um, const data equals, let's do an await fetch. That's going to require node fetch, I think. Let's see if next just polyfills that for me. Um, and I'm going to get the API products. And that should be all I need. So then we'll do a then. Mm, actually, I'm going to do it a different way. So we'll do an if the response is not okay. That should be the response. Uh, if the response is not okay, we're going to console.error response and we'll return. Um, maybe I just need that to be like an empty props so it doesn't explode. And then if we get down here, what I'll do is we'll get products equals uh, res.json and we need to await that so that'll give us our products and then I can just drop that products right in here um, and so then to show that we're going to get our products and I can put together in here let's do a pre and we'll JSON, stringify, products, and we'll do some light formatting so that it looks okay. And let's, I guess, just give it a shot, see what happens. Only absolute URLs are supported. Okay, that's fine. We can solve that problem. Um, what's the easiest way to solve that problem? I'm going to solve it by saying uh, const... URL equals new URL of either process.m.url or uh, we'll do HTTP localhost 888. And then we'll do URL dot path name is going to be API products. And in here we can do a, a URL to string. Okay, that should solve that problem. So let's try it again. Okay, so that didn't work. And that means that we should have a console error. And our console error is... Uh, 
Oh, it's picking up the wrong URL. Interesting. Okay, so it's pulling the the URL there. That's fine. So I'm going to just, we'll hard code it for now and remember that we need to fix this later. There you go. Let's come back out here, try again. And now we've got products. Okay, so now we've got our products. I wanna clean this up a little bit though because we're not actually gonna use all of this data and any amount of data that we load in JSON is gonna get shipped in the static props. Like whatever we return from static props is gonna end up in the, I think it ends up down here. Yeah, so this is all like page bloat. So you have to make sure that you're only sending data that you need. Otherwise you end up shipping a whole bunch of stuff that's not actually relevant. So I'm gonna do some data, um, like munging, modifying, massaging, whatever we want to call it. Um, and let's see. Um, yeah, let's give it a shot. So what I'm going to do is I, what I want, let's, um, let's just design our ideal product here. And so what I want is a title. Actually, I'm going to need an ID, right? I'm going to need a title. I want, what else do we have on the store here? Let's go to, let's go to the store and take a peek. Got a title. We've got a description. We've got a price and we've got this like add to cart button. Um, that'll put it over here. And so let's get the title, the description. We've got the inventory. Look, look how many of these I have. Please buy a duck. Um, and then I've got the, the price and this one. I, so I don't need to care about this price range because I don't think I have a price range on any of these. Let's just peek uh, price range 16, 16 for, yeah, price range is the same on all of these. So there's no, um, there's no need to use that one, so I can skip that. And with the images, I just need that first image. I didn't set alt text because I'm a monster. Dang it. Okay. So, oh, then I, so I need the description. I need the image. I need the price. Um, they're all going to be USD. So I can make some assumptions for my store that you would maybe not make for another store. Um, and then we would have the, the, Actually, I don't need the quantity. I just need to know if it is in stock and probably I don't even want to return it if it's out of stock. So instead we can just filter on, um, filter on quantity is over zero. Uh, do we have any other quantities that we want? I need the, I need the slug, which is the handle. And what else? I think that's it, right? I'm going to say yes, because I don't have like t-shirts or anything that I would need. So what I can do then is I can loop through this. So let's get products is going to be, um, oh wait, this is have to go all the way down here. Products is going to actually be here. And so this will be like data. And what I'm going to do with my products is do a data dot. Got data dot products dot edges, and we're going to map over that. Products dot edges dot map. And then each of these is going to be a node, which I'm, we're just going to keep node. And inside here. I can return some pieces. So the first thing we want to do is say, if the node dot total inventory, total inventory is less than or equal to zero, we're just going to return false. And then we'll have to add, um, let's just filter on Boolean and that'll let us get rid of anything that's, uh, that returns false. So then what I want to do is return our object here and we should be able to do that as ID would be 
node.id. The title is going to be node.title. Description will be the same. The image is going to be down here as node.images.edges0.node.source. Okay, so <laughs> we're just going to node.images.edges0. Oh, this is gross. Dot node dot source images edges zero node source. Um, yeah, don't like that. And I'm actually going to change this to be a source and an image alt. And sorry, this is not ideal, but it's what I'm going to do because I don't have time to go write alts on everything. And then for the prices, what we want is the um. I guess we'll go like variance edges. It feels like this is the right price to get in terms of just general correctness. Price range would let me get there faster, but I'm not going to do that. So we're going to go with um, node.variance.edges0. And then that goes into node.priceV2. Uh, dot amount, and that's going to be fine. And then slug is no dot handle. And assuming I did all of that right and didn't typo anything, what we should get as a result is uh, we should get back updated products that are much cleaner. There we go. And look how much less data this is too, right? So this, this really simplifies the amount of data that gets sent to the browser, which is going to make the page perform a little bit better. Um, that'll all be, that'll all be good. Um, the YouTube link on my Twitch bio is broken. Oh, that's not good. What did I do? Hmm. Um, Y'all don't like my cursive font? I like my cursive font. It's, uh, it's, this is operator mono and it uses, uh, it uses like an italic version for, for certain things. Um, but you know, everybody's, everybody's down on whatever you want to do. Uh, uh, dank mono. Yeah. That's another cool one. Um, operator mono was one of those ones that like, I feel like everybody was using operator mono and then it costs money. And then I don't know how, but I talked myself into buying a font just for my, my software IDE. But I guess that's, that's what it takes to be a hacker. So now I got my products. I want to make them actually show. And what I'm going to do with those products is I think to start Let's just put a component right in here. I, I like this idea of making um, React, like organizing React code where everything's in one file until it gets uncomfortable to do so. So I'm actually just gonna put the, the product component right here. And what I want it to do is once we get one, um, we're gonna return, I guess it'll be a div. That's, that's fine, I guess. Um, We'll give it a class name of styles product and inside of it, we want to show image first. And do we want sub pages? Yeah, we should probably try to get sub pages. Are we gonna have time for that today? We'll see. Um, so I'm going to start with the image, which will be linked and that will be to uh, slash product slug. Um, let's sub page it. We'll go products or singular, singular product. And then inside of that, we're going to do an image source, which will be product dot image source. Uh, the alt will be product dot image alt. Um, and then what are you yelling about? Intrinsic elements. Oh yeah, I probably should do that. Um, and we'll set this as an H2. We'll go with a product.title. Let's set up a paragraph that's got product.description. Um, let's then set up a another one that's going to have a class name of styles.price. 
and that will use product dot price. Is that what I called it? Dot price. Um, and for that one, I probably want to do like a currency formatter, but because I am short on time, I'm going to just hard code a dollar symbol. Um, just because I don't, I don't want to get, that's going to break on me, isn't it? Damn it. Okay. Just do, just, you know, just do things the right way. That's what you should do. So we're going to do formatted price and that's going to be new, uh, in INTL currency, right? No number format and locales is going to be in us and options we want currency is um usd is that right I'm just gonna i'm just gonna try this and see if it does what i want um so then formatted price is going to be formatted price dot format Does that do what I want? Let's try it. Oh, wait, I need to actually use this. So then in here, we're going to um, products.map and we'll get the product and then go with one of our products. Product, how many times can you say product in one line of code? All of them is the answer. Okay, so if I did this right, looks like I didn't. Missing key prop, nip needs a key, got it. The key is going to be the product.id. That's what we need it for. And now I have, look at that. There's our store. So let's do a little bit of, of styles, not very many. And what I'm going to do is uh, just set up a basic grid here. So let's go to our index. We have the products and then we have a product. So inside of this, we're going to set up products as a display grid i want um grid template columns to be repeat three one fr we'll set a gap of like one rem, two rem um, and then the product i don't think is going to need much so actually what i'm going to do is just get one of these and let's see what that did. All right, that's okay. Um, and then let's also set the product H2 to be like font size uh, 1.25. A little, a little less, a little easier to read, right? Um, and so now, okay, so clearly my formatter didn't work because I didn't set it up right. So let's go in number format, get into the MDN docs and see if we can find the currency example. Um, so we need style currency and then the currency style. So that's what I missed. Let's go back into our index and we'll say style is currency. And now if I did that right, when we come out here, there's our, there's our currency. Okay. So this is pretty cool, right? Like this, this didn't take much. It gave us what we wanted. We're, we're happy. We've got a listing of products. Um, and then what I want to happen is I want to show these products on an individual page. So for that to happen, we need to build a another API route that is, uh, let's see, data fetching, don't need that. I need API routes and I want dynamic API routes, which will live at, or I guess I just need like dynamic page routes, dynamic routes. And so I would set up like slash product slash uh, handle or whatever. So let's go with product and then it would be uh, slug.js. Okay, so in this, I'm going to actually copy a lot of this out um, because I just want to kind of prove the, the concept. And I'm going to call this one... product page, um, and then we've got our product itself, and I am going to 
we're going to do a map, but this time, instead of a filter, we can start with a find. Um, so I'm going to find and we'll get the node. And I want the um, node dot handle equals, and we need the page slug, which I need to find here. Where does it come from? It's going to be like params or something. Do you just have a, can I see an example? Hmm, example? Dynamic routing. Show me one of these. And we get ID and comment out of the router.query. Okay, so I need to get use router out of next router. And that is going to live up. That doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound right at all. Um, what if we just do one of these to figure out what it is? I'm going to get um, args, and then I'm going to console.log args to see what's in there. And we get, let's bounce to one of these. Unexpected token in node handle. Oh, that's right. Um, so let's start by just hard coding one of these and we'll say, um, what what is this one called? Rainbow Corgi toy. Okay, so we're gonna get that one. And then that should theoretically give us a piece. We're missing the styles. Oh, cause it needs to go up a layer. Yes. Get static path, get static paths is required. Um, all right, so let's export async function, get static paths. And that one is going to uh, use the same data actually. So I'm gonna get this and put that up here. And then for this one, what I want is we're going to uh, return um, where's the, is there like a link to the get static paths? Return paths. So I need to return paths and the path that I want to return is going to be, um, data dot. Where's my map data product dot edges dot map and then we're going to get our node and in our node we're going to return node dot handle and that'll give us an array of paths so that we have identified all of the pages url is not identified oh because we didn't grab that piece out that's fine we can go get that so this is where i'd probably want it to be like some kind of a helper function or something, but that's okay. We can fallback must be returned. So let's go with fallback false because I know that that one exists and I'm not going to look up the others. Provided path does not match the page. Provided path. What does that mean? Happened while generating the pages. Oh, cause I have to map these to include the whole thing. So product. data product dot edges dot find dot map. Um, so I think then what I want to do is with this find, we will just find. And then I want to just update this piece. Hmm. Cause that's a Boolean. All right. So this is inefficient, but it's a small list. So I'm not going to stress about it. And I'm just going to put the find at the end. Um, and then the filter is not going to work anymore. Cause it's going to be single undefined reading handle. 
and that's because we've changed it to a product. So instead I'm going to get the slug and do the slug. How about now? Products.map is not a function. Yes, it is. No, it's not because we are returning product. That is a product. And this will then be product. And instead of a an array, we're going to get a single, which means I'm going to drop this in like that. And we don't need the key anymore. Ta-da! Okay, so now we've got the ability to do all of that, and I can put in something like um, ahref. Let's go back. It's going to yell at me about not using the the next thing again. So here's my left arrow back home, and now we have boom. All right. So not not perfect, but also oh oh because I hard coded. Okay, hold hold please. Um, so we have to look and see what our, um, what our URL components are, which are going to be in here. So we get params and then slug. So I want up here, get static paths. I want params. Nope. Not in this one. Get static props. I want params and then here. I want it to be um, where we hard coded. It's going to be params.slug. And now we have a working store. Kind of. Like we don't have checkout, and it, I'm almost assuredly going to run out of time before we can do the checkout. So let's go back to the. Um, why not link is honestly, I just, I didn't, um, I didn't, I don't remember exactly the syntax and I would rather get the store than, than fix that error. So I'm going to go to learn with Jason on GitHub and I'm going to see if we can do a really, really quick and dirty checkout page, um, just so that we can see that flow working. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go in here and there should be one called checkout. How does this work? Shopify add to cart, Shopify create checkout. Okay, so this is the piece that I that I need and we get a cart ID. Oh no, it's got so many pieces that I don't have time to put in. Um, okay, so maybe let's talk through this so that it's not uh, it's not completely lost. But so the way that this works is when you when you first load up a cart, it or when you load up the page, we need to create a cart. And to create a cart, we go to Shopify and we try to get a cart using the ID. The ID is um, coming out of our, uh, where does it come in? It comes out of the event body, so we're posting it. And if we don't have one, then we create a new one, right? Um, so if we don't have a cart, then we return an empty cart, that's right. If we do have a cart, then we get all of the items in the cart and return those as our cart. And that's what this looks like. So you can see here that I've got my, um, my cart. If I refresh the page, this is actually loaded from Shopify. So if I go in and look at my application and look at my, I think it's in my local storage, I have a cart ID. So this is my Shopify cart ID and this stays live with them and shows that I've added things to my cart. So that's, that's what we're doing there is, um, is we're, re we're retrieving that cart. And then when I want to add something to the cart, uh, down under the Shopify things, I then take the product, which, um, let's see, we get our cart ID and then we get an item ID and how many of the things we want. So we post those and that lets me, um, run this add item to cart, which is, where does that come in? Add item to cart comes out of this um, this util here, which, if I remember correctly, is going to be a uh, another GraphQL query. And so once we've added it, we then update our cart and we return the updated cart uh, with the the lines in it. 
Um, if we don't have a cart, then we can create a new one, which is another function, create cart with item. And that will then give us our, our new piece. So basically what this means is if you don't have a cart, you can, um, you can add something and it'll create the cart on the fly. Otherwise it creates the cart ahead of time. And then you've got one that's, that's like there, which is what happens when I refresh the page here. Um, this is me looking at my cart and that's loaded. So if I empty the cart, it'll say empty refresh gone. And I think if I reload this, yeah, the card ID is gone. So it clears that card ID. But then if I add another one, I've got my sticker and I've got a new card ID. So this is my new card ID that, uh, that will persist. And whenever I reload the page, it shows me more things. So if I add another thing, it puts that in. And then, you know, as I add more stuff, navigate around the site, the card stays persistent. So that's the, the functionality there. And then in, if I want to go check out, I use my cart ID and say, Hey, Shopify, give me a, um, a checkout URL. So that checkout URL is going to be how we go to the Shopify checkout, which if I go here, that's this URL. So I'm going to click it, I'm creating a checkout, and then it's going to redirect me to that checkout. And you end up on the Shopify checkout page. So this is where you see the, um, like the shop pay, Google pay, meta pay, whatever you're using. And if I enter like my email, then it'll automatically text me a, a confirmation code and all that kind of thing. Um, so this is how all of these pieces work. Um, if I give you a discount code, you can use the discount code. Um, so a lot, you know, a lot going on here. And in fact, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a discount code for everybody right now. And let's call this one uh lwj chat friends and this one is going to be uh we're just going to do a like a 20 percent off discount so lwj chat friends and we're going to do a 20 percent off discount on any products and we'll say yeah. 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 And this is going to be good for the next, we'll say three ish weeks. We'll end it on Friday, the 26th. So if you get this, this code, um, oops, if you, if you use this between now and the 26th, um, you can get 20% off anything in the store. Let me save that and drop this, this one add there we go save and here you go friends if you would like to get anything from the store today it's 20 percent off um and all right let's do uh let's let's do a little bit of looking at how the rest of that works so on the client side what we would need to do is um on the page itself which is out here and then we've got uh I put all this in the app. Yeah, there we go. And then I've got my routes and I've got the store. I think I did all the code in here. So you get all your products and we format cart. Where's my checkout button? The checkout button sends to API store, create checkout with the cart ID. And, uh, and like, this is what's cool about this, right? Is it, it, there's no magic here. You're just posting to this API route. And then that API route, uh, that we looked at up here, Nellify functions, create checkout. Um, it's going to get that checkout URL. And then do you see here how I'm, I'm doing a, a redirect. So basically we create this and then immediately redirect to the new URL. And that's how you get that experience of like clicking the button and then you get, uh, you get to the checkout page and everything works. So what I need to do and, and what'll happen in, um, in the future is we'll go through and, and actually clean this up so that each one has its own page. These need to have their own presentation layer so that they can, uh, they can be like a little nicer looking when they're on a, a single page. Um, I'd love to be able to show, you know, like I said, if you get one of these, these rainbow Corgi toys, 
send me a picture of it. Like I, I've seen a lot of really cool ones. People, you know, put them next to their own, their actual corgis. Uh, people had some fun stuff where they like set them up on their desks. Um, if you have any of those, send them to me. And maybe this next iteration that has uh, product pages will be, will include those. If, uh, I mean, obviously if you give me permission to do it. So um, lots to do still to make this actually functional, but it's fun. I'm happy about it. I think it's, it was cool that we were able to get this far on an e-commerce store um, in just, you know, about an hour 15 is about how long we've been working on this. Uh, and with like that five minutes of me just having to shut down the whole stream while things echoed. Um, so not, not bad, not bad at all, everybody. I'm, uh, I'm pretty excited. And yeah, uh, Josh is calling out that um, Kelly did an episode with me where we set up a checkout. So let me find this episode here. Custom cart. There we go. So this is a, a whole episode that you can watch where we set up the cart. This is the part, the process of getting the cart set up and created, of adding things to it, removing things from it, and um, creating the checkout URL. So, so this was part of Jamstack Conf um, 2021, so last year, and we used the storefront API. This was a super fun episode, uh, part of a much bigger app where we we built out a whole Shopify storefront. But um, yeah, lots and lots of good things going on in here. Definitely worth checking this one out. Um, Kelly is is very funny and very knowledgeable. So make sure you go give that a look. <sighs> Any questions, chat? We got, we got a little bit of time. Um, not enough time for me to really build anything, but enough time for me to maybe deploy this. Why don't we do that, actually? So if you all have questions, ask them. While you're doing that, I am going to uh, deploy this thing. So let me get in. I'm going to do a readme. Y'all want to see how I do the readmes for Learn with Jason? It's not an emoji. It's one of these. There it is. Insert snippet. And then I do this LWJ snippet thing. Um, and then I grab the episode name. Right. And then I got the episode slug. Drop that thing in here. Uh, the demo name is going to be LWJ Store Next.js Shopify. And that's going to be the repo name as well. And then it asked me for a description, so I copy paste the one from the description. And that's how I make a readme. So then I'm going to git add all. Great. I'm going to git commit and say, uh, code after episode and we're going to github repo create i want to push the existing repo to github that's this one here lwj store nextjs netlify nextjs shopify uh good but i want it to be on the learn with json repo so i'm going to copy this and drop this in and that'll put it in the org um skip that it's going to be public and i do want to add a remote origin is good would I like to push? I would like to push. Oh, this tool is so good. Um, so then, I guess I need to upgrade my GitHub CLI. And uh, yeah, then what happens? Then, because I started setting this up sort of oddly, I'm going to uh, finish in the browser. So we've got our environment variables here. So the environment variables were already set up. I don't have to do anything. I am going to go over here to the uh, link repository. And I'm going to use GitHub. I don't need GitHub, so let's. I don't need the Netlify account. I'm just using my own. So I'm going to get Learn with Jason, and we're going to search Shopify. I have a million repos, so that takes a minute. There's my new setup, and it's smart enough to know. Do I have a yarn? I do have a yarn lock. Mm, I don't want to use yarn. So I'm going to get rid of the yarn lock. I'm going to go back into my package JSON, make sure it's not using yarn. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to do npm run build. And whoops, don't need to hit save. It's a website. Uh, we've already got those. So I'm going to deploy. And it's off to the races. It should just work. Let's, let's, uh, I feel like when I get out of the automatic setup, 
like I just did. Sometimes I forget a step, so this first one might give me an error, and then I'll have to fix a little piece. Why not yarn out of interest? I, to be completely honest, uh, just my my preference, and it used yarn anyways because I didn't push that change. Um, it it really is just like I don't have I I use npm, and so that's my my big thing. Um, let's see, use npm. And we'll push that. I think this is actually going to fail because I didn't have the... I think I missed all of the pieces because NPM isn't there. What don't you like? Why doesn't it like that? Are you going to freaking fail because I'm... you? Oh, that is uncool. Like, I get that linter errors are, um, are there to help you, but, like, that's... That is not great. Um... So what do I need to do? I need to go and get the these images. Did that auto import for me? Of course not. Let's see, import image from next image. And then what is your API so that I can image source, alt probably. I hope that works. We're just gonna leave it alone um, and then do I need to do anything other? So I need this one. Does that automatically come in? It does. And what is the API for these? Did they finally fix this? Link internal props. Do I have to pass it an A still? Or are you going to work? think that works and then we can go back out to our index and do the same thing so give me an image and that needs to come in from next image and then we need a link and that's going to come in from next link and I hope this just works let me start it up again and see that's irritating let's see Image with source must use width and height or layout fill. Fine. Um, we'll just do layout fill because I don't know what they are. See, like that, this is where a linting error would be helpful, but it doesn't have one. So here's my product. And invalid source prop. Yo, you're killing me. Don't make me use... Don't fail my builds on your silly stuff if you're not going to just work. Okay. Um, now I need to do this. And it's going to be cdn.shopify.com. And now you'll work. I did configure it. Images, module.exports. Yeah. Do I have to stop and restart? Restart the server. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that was, that's what you would expect it to do. That makes sense. Um, okay. So I guess we'll switch out the, the image. Am I out of time? I'm almost out of time. So. Um, cool. Yeah, this is fine. We're going to do width equals, uh, how big was it supposed to be? We'll go with maybe 200. Does that work? No, must use width and height. So hopefully these are all square. It's whatever. It's fine. Um, let's maybe make it a little bit bigger. No, that should be right. If I make it 400, does it blow things out? No, that's fine. Okay, so I'm going to have to do the same thing on the other one. And now it all works. Are we getting errors? I don't see any errors. So let's try this one more time. Git commit.
get push. Um, and now it's going to build and actually run this time. So off we go. Don't you fail me on a linting error. All right. Did y'all come up with any questions? Um, no questions I'm seeing. So while we're waiting for that to build, which should only take a minute, let's do a uh, another quick round of shout outs. So I'm going to uh, give a shout out to Rachel with White Coat Captioning homepage. Um, we've got all the, the captions coming to you live. That's White Coat Captioning on the scene. That's made possible through the support of our sponsors, Netlify, NX, and New Relic, all kicking in to make this show more accessible to more people. And we've got a lot of good stuff coming up. I just sent over some new episodes to get added, so this list is incomplete. But later this week, we are going to be working with Varun Vachar on uh, automated accessibility tests with Storybook. I'm pretty excited about this one. Storybook is, uh, I think, in a lot of teams' workflows. And accessibility is one of those things that you want to do and it is sometimes confusing and it's really, really easy to miss stuff. So automating some accessibility tests is going to level up your team um, and, and get you a lot of, of good stuff. We've also got some fun stuff coming up. I think next week we are going to have uh, Fred K. Schott back on the show uh, to talk about Astro 1.0, which is, I think, dropping also next week on, on Monday. Um, so that's exciting. Get ready for Astro 1.0. We're going to talk about what that means and uh, all sorts of good stuff coming. So just, you know, oh, Adam Argyle is going to come on. We're going to talk about CSS open props, which is sort of like a, it's like CSS variables that you can import and use sort of like you would do Tailwind or something, but like you don't have to install anything. It just works. It's very, I'm very excited about it. Uh, I've, I've been following Adam's work for a long time. So this is going to be an exciting one. Um, and then, you know, we got, we got Will coming on. We got uh, David, David Corsheets coming back on. We're going to talk about some state machines, I think. Um, just a lot of good stuff coming up. So make sure that you add on Google Calendar. That'll, that'll put the episodes on your calendar. You can follow on Twitch. You can also find me on YouTube since it appears that I broke the YouTube link, I'll drop a new one. Um, this is the the correct link, so you can go follow Learn With Jason. And my build freaking failed again, why? Oh, gosh darn it. Um, that's annoying. So my API route's gonna fail because I have to deploy the API route to call the API route, which means that I can't call it you know what, I'm gonna have to fix this off stream, but basically what that means is in order to do what I am doing, um, I need to like deploy the function and then do it. So in a in another project, what I'd probably do is like deploy an API separately so that I could use the API to build the site. Um, I could also build all of that API stuff into Next, but like if I wanna use it somewhere else, I'd like to be able to use it. I guess I could put it in API. Well, I did put it in API route, right? But I. Yeah, I don't want to build it into the like the server page because I want to be able to get to my product. So I just need to do a, a little bit of like clever deployment. I'll turn off the product loading, deploy the site so it doesn't call that API route. Once it's deployed, I'll turn it back on, and that'll that'll fix the whole thing. But uh, yeah, stay tuned. You can you can follow along with the Git history. That'll that'll go live here as soon as I get time to fix it. Otherwise, thanks y'all. I appreciate you hanging out. Um, as always, it's been a blast. So um, let's uh, let's go find somebody to raid. We're going to go see Ben Myers, who is, I think, about to go live. Is that right? Yes. So we're going to go raid Ben. Everybody go say hello. We will see you all next time.